Montel, I know you like this one right here, brother. Whew. Yeah, you got a good one. Hey, Josh had- playing those hits. You are on a roll, my friend. Hey, we had to. We had to. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of the NGSC Draft Central Podcast. I'm your host, Joshua Zimmer. As always, joined Mr. Montel Hardy. Montel, what's going on, brother? Uh, not much, man. Just another uh, another week, man. We got uh, bowl games coming up. Uh, obviously, some holiday in between. This is kind of like the slowdown portion of uh, the college football time, and uh, we're entering the slowdown first portion of the NFL time. Uh, if your team is not going to be in the mix for the playoffs, oh, most definitely. And before any of Draft Nation starts getting weirded out, uh, my inner Willie uh, Woody Page has came out and so from now on each week the board will have something new and for those who aren't on periscope the board says coach zimmer may or may not be my uncle now i can neither confirm or deny this and we're just going to leave it at that so please (laughs) think what you think um but i mean if it helps i am a vikings fan Uh, so without further ado we could talk about Woody Page and his antics all day long and the fact that I may be related to uh, Mike Zimmer, but that's not what we're going to talk about this evening. Montel, dude, I tell you what, man, this was a good week of college football um, in terms of the news that has came out. Uh, obviously, the biggest mm-hmm. news is the fact that the whole Robert Kim Dietschy situation um, dude, I don't even know where to begin with this. Um, I was pretty dumbfounded when I read about this over the weekend. It just does not make any sense to me. Uh, for those who haven't heard it, uh, Robert Kendici, obviously a top talent in this draft. I mean, he's in my top 10. Montel, I'm more than likely going to bet that he's in your top 10 as toward our updated rankings. He's in everybody else's top 10 or even top five. Uh, was that a hotel room, obviously was having some fun, some partying, you know, getting rid of uh, mm-hmm. the stress of finals, and was on Spice. I believe they called it K2, uh, that I'm unfamiliar with, which is basically a synthetic. And he, long story short, jumped out of a window, fell off a ledge, and fell 15 feet. Now, the crazy thing about this story is that he only fell 15 feet but he had scratches. That's the only thing he got. He didn't have any broken bones, didn't have any, you know, ligament damage to anything like that. Not even so much as a bruise, just had some cuts. Uh, so thank God, number one, he's all right. Uh, number two, man, he must take care of his body if uh, he didn't develop anything on those falls. But number three, and this is the thing that we need to talk about, Montel, real quick, is his draft stock. What necessarily, in your mind, what's this do to his draft stock? Uh, sure, Josh. Uh, well, well, first off, <clears throat> first, I, I didn't have Kim Dietschy in my top ten to begin with. You know, we talked about it. I like him. I, I think he can play a good three-tech. If he's, you know, big like people say he is, he can definitely be a five-tech for someone. But initially, I wanted to see how much he weighed. Uh, that was one of my bigger questions about him. And, I, you know, if you look at the tape, there's, you know, there's some questions. And, and now you have some character issues. So, you know, it's going to take a huge hit here. I think if you're the biggest Kim D.G. fan, you've got to at least put him towards the bottom of the first. Uh, me personally, I'm moving him completely out of the first and then and into the second somewhere uh, as details comes out. Now, this is always assuming that he uh, is completely healthy right now, goes to the combine and performs well, and doesn't get any uh, doesn't get into any trouble uh, in between then and now. So. Uh, a lot of you know factors have to contribute to it, but yes, he does lose some draft stock here. And in mo- on most boards, on any reputable board, uh, moving forward into this week, he should be off the first round list. Yeah, and uh, somebody from Draft Nation actually had a good comment about that. He said, in this day and age, nothing he could go to the Cowboys, and then comments with, uh, "Don't we wish?" You know, I completely agree. You know, this, this is the <laughs> enigma of this situation is that number one, it was a one-time thing. Uh, It wasn't like a Randy Gregory situation where we had last year where, you know, he failed the drug test at the combine. And then it came out that not only did he have some problems with the coaching staff, 
but also had multiple failed drug tests. As we know right now, this is his first run-in with the police, is with the law. Regardless of the fact, I mean, come on. Dude, you had to be clean and smart for six months. That's all you had to do. And mm-hmm. We had this conversation last year about Randy Gregory. This is a this is the situation in this day and age that it's not going to matter. More than likely, you know, he's going to get his talk at the combine. He's going to get his story out. He's going to get his side out, and the truth will come out eventually. I don't buy his apology, you know, the apology that he read. Um, I mean, as it's sincere, and again, great for him to apologize, but the fact of the matter is when you are at the platform that you are, which he said – I am at a platform and worked hard to be at this platform. I need to be the right role model to younger players and younger people. Well, falling out of a ledge 15 feet isn't necessarily a good way to get that started on the right foot there, buddy. But Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Character concern, he's out of the first round. Talent-wise, he's still a top 15 pick. The biggest issue is going to be what do the teams think of this? If they grade it as much as bad as the whole Randy Gregory situation last year, then we should be okay, and we will. Our guy, part of Draft Nation, is going to get his wish, and he's going to fall out of the first round. If not, if people view it as a Johnny Manziel type situation, to where they think he could still come in and be, you know, whether it be sell tickets, like that's what they drafted Johnny for, guys. I'm sorry, but just admit it, Browns fans. Or that he can mm-hmm. be a straight contributor and an impact player right away, he's going to probably be a first round pick. Um, but it's definitely going to be yeah. noted to see just how this plays out because I believe it's Hugh Freeze is the head coach at Ole Miss. He has not came out and said yet whether or not he is going to be suspended for the bowl game. My opinion, I believe he should, or at least this, well, not the entire game, but maybe the half. It's all going to depend on you know the impending investigation that's going to be completed by this. Well, I, I think they know enough now to just just go ahead and hold him out. I mean, he did it. He ran from it. Um, I know you noted earlier that <clears throat> he he'd gotten hurt a little bit or you know a few scratches. But to me, the the big story here is is that you know what they found in the room, the you know yeah. the seven roll joints. Uh, you know that's enough to indict him uh, if you're a coach. I mean, cool. If you want to play him, cool, you know, but just know that you have enough information right now to just not play him um, more than enough. Oh, yeah, and I completely agree about that, you know, completely agree 100%. And I think that might be uh, as fun as this is going to say, this might be the only time that we agree this evening. And so why not start it off early? Uh, The second one real quick that we need to bring up, Obviously, a big congratulations to Derrick Henry. He won the Heisman. Well-deserved. Um, everybody knows that I was pulling for Christian McCaffrey. It didn't play out. Montel, we should have bet on it. You would have won. But yeah. in all in all honesty, congrats to Derrick Henry. And now, finally, in terms of Draft Nation uh, across the country or the draft community, for example, uh, he's finally starting to get the love that he deserves in terms of a prospect um, while people are still dogging him at that point we're going to have a long way to go. Um, The second biggest news, obviously, is the fact that Oregon poached another FCS quarterback. Um, As Montana State's starting quarterback from the last two years, who was also a graduate this fall, matter of fact, walked three days ago, Dakota Prukop, chose Oregon over the University of Alabama. Now, just a real quick rundown on uh, Mr. Prukop. Over his two years as a starter at Montana State, he's had 5,500 yards passing and a touchdown-to-interception ratio of 46 to 16. He's also ran for 1,700 yards and 24 touchdowns. Most importantly, Montel, about this situation is the fact that, number one, Oregon needs to learn how to develop a quarterback after they lose a star guy. Um, As bad as that sounds, they keep poaching FCS kids, although I do love the platform for them to be able to go and play at a bigger situation if they have to. But, Montel, do you believe that Oregon could be a contender with this kid in the Pac-12 next year? 
uh, can he contend in the Pac-12? But uh, sure, you know, first off, I felt like you know maybe there are some issues I didn't consider. But when um, when we spoke about it, and you told me that uh, Prukop was looking at Alabama, I was almost confident he he wouldn't be looking for them very long. Uh, they have a five-star quarterback prospect in Blake Barnett, who's uh, I mean he's going to want to play, and I think next year should be his year. Um, or, or they got Cooper Bateman. Uh, so that's, you know, when you, when you transfer like that, you don't really want to see that much competition. And uh, yeah. he, he would have got his hands full over in, in Tuscaloosa with those two quarterbacks. Uh, moving back to the, the Oregon situation, uh, it's also not, you know, too far. I don't know where home is for him. Is, is he initially from Montana? But, but Oregon uh, no, would be he's pretty a, He's a Texas kid. Uh, oh, he's a text? Okay, well, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, either way, I guess it wouldn't be much of a difference. But uh, if he were to go to uh, to Oregon, at least uh, he knows that by default he'd have to have less competition. I don't know who Oregon's pulled in at quarterback, but uh, I guarantee you he can't hold a candle to Blake Barnett. That's one of the better quarterbacks I've seen. And this is just going off of, uh, you know, what I've seen in some of his high school stuff uh, leading up to uh, the Elite 11 camp. So, yeah, Josh, I think you can contend, though. Uh, we've seen uh, uh, what their current guy, uh, Vernon Adams, right? He he didn't really get over there till you know, maybe mid-summer. He had to learn the playbook. We You know, they didn't know if he'd pass his class or not to be able to transfer. Um, at least Prukop's going to get more time, it looks like. I don't think he'll come down to a final exam for him. Uh, the more time, the better. I think he maybe will start a little slower like Adams did, but I'll tell you right now, it appears that he's got better arm talent than Adams in, uh, in Oregon's offense. That can take you a very long way. Yep, especially with the way that it's such a similar type offense. Montana run or Montana State, excuse me. Sorry, folks. Uh, Montana State runs a very similar spread offense type deal, and in terms of their passing trees and their passing concepts, they're very similar. And you brought up a good point with Dakota is the fact that, you know, he's already graduated. So we're not going to have to worry about whether or not he passes a class because he already walked. So he has his eligibility in play. The only thing he has to do is just has to be accepted to Oregon, which is not going to be a problem because if they want this kid, they're going to get him. And if Vernon Adams got in, I'm sorry, Vernon, then Dakota's going to get in. Um, so it's, it's going to be fun to watch this play out. You know, it, it truly is. It's going to be fun to watch this play out. Um, you know, we're going to have to put our notes on it. And I've already told everybody before, but I'm going to tell everybody now, this kid is going to be fun to watch next year in terms of draft evaluation because he's bigger, he's stronger, and he's faster. So... It's going to just be real, real quick. Uh, how did he end up at uh, Montana? You know, was he not too highly recruited, and maybe developed into this guy? Did he get himself in some trouble? No, uh, he was just he came up from a new high school. It's called Van Gift. It's right outside of Dallas, Texas, and they didn't have any FCS, you know, FCS or FBS schools coming in there. He was tempted to walk on at Texas Tech University. And then Montana State actually sent a guy down because they were recruiting a guy that he was playing against as a corner, saw him, and he was killing it. They ended up offering him to walk on, or as a preferred walk on. And then the very next year, he won the starting job. Okay. So, and he he, he wasn't, you know, as a guy that points out in Draft Nation, this dude's keeping me on point tonight. He is not been highly recruited. So, it, again, so another story with this is it was cool to see a kid who wasn't being highly recruited and had to work his way up the chain as a starter uh, end up getting schools like Michigan, Texas, Oregon, and Alabama calling him. So I'm going to root for him. I'm going to wish him the best. Dakota, good luck. I'm sure I'm going to reach out to you sometime within the next couple of weeks uh, whenever you get back from Hawaii. Um, but Montel, we could talk about that all day long. Cause I think that in terms of football news, that's the thing that I was most excited about this entire week was hearing where he was going to go. But it's, it's that time again for us of to get course, into a little course. debate. It's time again mm-hmm. for us to get into a little bit of a debate. So go ahead and throw your gloves on. Um, if we want, we can turn this into, you know, the whole Rocky and Apollo thing. Um, but it's time to talk our top five linebackers. 